Steve Cooper, Rank Success, and this is a uh, video about values, about the CVF values, and this particular video is about the value of transparency. Now, it's one of the four CVF uh, values, so you've got transparency, impartiality, uh, integrity, and public service. And all of them are interconnected, all of them overlap, and they overlap with lots of other values as well. So this is why sometimes it can be quite difficult for people to do the work ahead of a promotion process. Um, if you want to prevail, then that's generally built upon a depth and breadth of preparation, which includes values. Now I have uh, done a couple of other videos. So there's one called Mapping Your Values, which you might want to watch in conjunction with this one. Um, and the theme about values, as I've said, some of them overlap, or quite a lot of them overlap. So even if you look at the, the CVF guidance from the College of Policing, um, you will see uh, crossovers and blends, if you like, overlaps with um, values such as integrity, honesty, and you'll sometimes see them mentioned in the same paragraph under one value. And that's because they're about a, a holistic type approach to uh, policing, policing by consent, and they're the values that underpin police behaviours at all levels. So that's why we've got them. And that's why they are part of your preparation for a promotion selection process. Now, one of the easiest ways to think about a question is uh, for this value is just imagine it on your promotion board. And some forces do ask these questions a bespoke per se. So they split the values up and the competencies up. So you may well get a question uh, at any level, uh, but certainly a um, sergeant inspector and maybe chief inspector saying, um, you know, Tell us about how you demonstrate transparency in the workplace. So just just get used to the rear facing and forward facing aspects of that at the moment. How have you demonstrated transparency in the workplace? Or just imagine you get asked, how will you demonstrate the value of transparency in the workplace? So just getting that as a initial question to work with can be quite good. What I've done is I've printed off the um, College of Policing um, guidance. And before you go there, as I've said to you before in previous videos with the competencies, don't go to the College of Policing guidance first. Start with what you've got, work with what you already know. So what does transparency mean to you? And sometimes people will just say, well, look, it's see-through. <laughs> see-through, that's what it means to me. Uh, so that's one interpretation of it. Um, go to the dictionary. What does the dictionary say? It's generally quite good for nailing it to the wall. Um, the condition of being transparent, you can see through it. So what people might think it is and what it is are not too far apart. So working with that and what that means to you, when have you actually been seen through, transparent? When have you been able to kind of do that? Um, generally in your personal relationships, hopefully you'll be see through um, in some respects. But applied to a person, it means that they cannot or a person cannot or does not hide something so when you try and link that in and weave that into preparing for your promotion board start looking at the guidance they've given you in the college of, in the CVF guidance and it tells you straight away that it links to the code of ethics unsurprisingly and specifically to the principles of honesty and openness so have a look at those and start thinking and developing your own understanding of them. It then lays it out as to what the behaviours are expected in policing. We are transparent in our actions, our decisions and our communications, both to people we work with and to the public we serve. So it's quite explicit in terms of interpretation about what that value is. Uh, we work to communicate and we endeavour to, to create trusting relationships. We accept feedback and we're comfortable in responding to criticism. Now, what I'd encourage you to do as you read through this is to, is if you get a question triggered in your mind, um, trusting relationships, we work to create trusting relationships. There's a question there. Imagine a board saying, how do you do that? How do you work to create trusting relationships? Because it'll be linked to this value. Um, comfortable in responding to criticism. Well, not everybody is. So, Tell us about a time you've been comfortable about responding to criticism or receiving criticism. So start slowing things down and just, just creating some side questions to the side that will help develop your thinking and some of your responses to this. 
and we build trust with our colleagues, partners and communities by being open about what we've done and why we've done it and by keeping our promises so that communities can rely upon us when needed. So we police by consent and one of the ways in which we demonstrate um, and I apologise, I keep calling myself, uh, I keep saying we, I've been out of the police for the last six years, um, but it's a difficult habit to lose. Um, so the NDM is a particular tool in which you demonstrate uh, transparency to your colleagues, you build trust, um, and it's how you demonstrate transparency to communities. So making difficult, tough decisions, so let's say stop search operations or section 60s, um, they generally create conflict. But if you're asked to, if you're required to, you can generally um, explain your rationale using the NDM uh, because it's a way of being accountable. It's a way of being transparent. So starting to think about some of the tools you work with on a daily basis, like the NDM, and your own behaviours and your own values are all part of transparency. So that initial question I asked you, how do you demonstrate transparency in the workplace or how will you, the NDM may or may not be part of um, a response to that kind of question. So the behaviours, so the CVF then does give you some useful behaviours and guidance around that. So I ensure that my decision making rationale is clear and considered so that it's easily understood by others. Again there's a clear link there to using the NDM to think through, to work through and as a tool for you to be transparent to colleagues and to the public and to other people. Um, I'm clear and comprehensive when communicating with others. Well, how are you, or how do you ensure that you're clear and comprehensive when communicating with others? Just flip it as a potential question from a promotion board, because it'll be linked to this, this um, value of transparency. And again, just looking at that one there, briefings. So it's a particular part of the role of a sergeant and of a uh, inspector is the ability to be able to brief effectively, clearly, uh, and in various different formats and, and contexts and using different models. Um, the next bullet point um, for behaviour guidance is I'm open and I'm honest. So there's some of those overlaps uh, of one of the values, so honesty is appearing within transparency. Um, I'm honest about my areas for development and I strive to improve. So flip that as a question on a board potentially. Tell us about how you're improving. Clearly that's linked to your CPD. But as a leader, as a manager, a supervisor, it's also linked to uh, your responsibility, you taking responsibility for supporting and guiding uh, the uh, CPD of your teams, of the people on your teams, so that they can also um, get opportunities in the workplace to learn and to grow and to develop and to become better cops, basically. Um, I give an accurate representation of my, my actions and records. Yeah, the NDM requires you, uh, when appropriate, and that's a matter for your professional judgment to uh, to write down um, an accurate representation of your actions based upon the information you had at the time uh, and of course, of course a court will be even more interested in that uh, normally two years down the line um, I recognize the value of feedback and I act on it so let's flip that into a potential question when have you acted upon feedback and that has been a question on boards and it may well have been linked to this um, this particular value um, so I would say, you know, I give, the next point is I give constructive and accurate feedback. So again, when have you done that? How did you do that? And what was the result or the outcome from that? How do you normally give feedback? Uh, I represent the opinions of others accurately and consistently. So that's around fairness and inclusion. I'm consistent and truthful in my communications and I maintain confidentiality appropriately. So there's some great guidance there in the CBF around that value and around the four values, but it's about kicking into slow time. You can't really um, speed date with this stuff. It's quite slow work because it involves reflection, introspection, and for you to start overlapping some of your own experiences within policing um, at whatever level you are with those values, with those behaviors, and working in your own interests to try and draft some potential questions that might arise in a promotion selection process. And that's what I would call gaining traction, gaining momentum, getting yourself to a point where you're match fit for this kind of thing. So that when someone just says, give us an example of trans where you've um, um, demonstrated transparency in the workplace, you can, you can talk for five minutes about that because it's meaningful to you, you've done the work. And that really does show through. Values really do show through to 
uh, promotion panels, uh, if you're just saying the words, they'll know. If you're able to drill down a little bit into the depths, into what that means for you. So in relation to transpar uh, transparency, you might use as a trigger sentence, you know, this is important to the public because. And there's lots of little trigger sentences that you can use to just try and uh, introduce uh, your experience uh, and your um, reflection and thinking around how you demonstrate transparency is so important to policing and that's why it's one of the four stated values. Um, now if you want to see some really detailed examples of values statements uh, that are at the level required um, you can download one of my digital toolkits. I have said that uh, I will show this guide which is RS Guides 20 which is a discount code to get you 20% off any of my digital guides. Um, but again, if you want to look at how values are either uh, explicitly stated as a uh, statement or woven into detailed examples of promotion evidence, if you're someone who's working through your own or thinking through your own evidence ahead of a promotion process, you may find them very useful. Um, I will be doing more videos uh, on these values, so uh, subscribe to this channel or follow me on social media. I share lots of things to do with uh, leadership management. Um, inspiration motivational kind of stuff that I find uh, inspiring and one of the things that that I also find inspiring is is the people I work with the, the people that, that, that call me the people I work through this kind of stuff with and uh, and the thing that really inspires me is when they're successful when they get through their processes uh, and they are more connected with these values uh, and uh, more able to talk about them and there's no secrets to any of that it's based upon some hard work but also some smart work, but you've got guidance to work with. You've got tools such as my digital guides to, to do a deeper dive. Um, and I'll look forward to doing more of these. I quite like doing these kind of videos, uh, particularly around the values based um, stuff. So uh, I will look forward to speaking to you again. Till then, take care.